Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Corinne. I'm a photo organizer here at Pixology, and I'm going to be your host today. We're going to be hearing from Molly. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Corinne. I'm a photo organizer here at Pixology, and I'm going to be your host today. We're going to be hearing from Molly. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, Bob. Thanks for joining us from Knoxville. Hi, Bob. All right, so we're going to be live on Facebook and YouTube, um, but there will also, I, I do not right. know.
everybody. I am thrilled to be here, even if it is in a recording. Thank you so much to Corinne for hosting today's live question and answer photo organizing program. I have a lot of questions that came in last week, like a lot. So I'm not even going to read. through them all we're through them all we're gonna dive in first of all uh, am Ruth last week asked how do you clean scratches on CDs do alcohol swabs or toothpaste work and for her because we've talked about some of the CDs that have had um, troubles, either corrupted pictures or these darn scratches. I have found here at Pixology, we don't have good luck when CDs have scratches on them. And so I really, you know, couldn't answer about the alcohol swabs or toothpaste working because uh, no, nothing has worked when we've had um, problematic. Hello, everybody. I am thrilled to be here, even if it is in a recording. Thank you so much to Corinne for hosting today's live question and answer photo organizing program. 
I have a lot of questions that came in last week, like a lot. So I'm not even going to read through them all. We're going to dive in. First of all, uh, Am Ruth last week asked, how do you clean scratches on CDs? Do alcohol swabs or toothpaste work? And I know this has been a problem for her because we've talked about some of the CDs that have had um, troubles, either corrupted pictures or these darn scratches. I have found here at Pixology, we don't have good luck when CDs have scratches on them. And so I really, you know, couldn't answer about the alcohol swabs or toothpaste working because uh, no, nothing has worked when we've had um, problematic CDs, like deep scratches. Sometimes your CDs may have a lighter scratch and then I think you have some potential to, to save that CD. And it's important because that might be your only copy of those photos. So I don't have, you know, the, the work experience here to answer this about alcohol swabs or toothpaste actually bringing a CD back to life. So what do you do when you don't know? You go to WikiHow. And actually, uh, we were talking about this at supper last night. And I was asking my husband, you know, what do you do when you have a scratch CD? I Nothing we've ever tried has worked. He's like, well look online and so I apologize for having um, you know something that I can't speak to personally but on this page there are just loads of ideas on how to fix the scratch CD and there's people who have tried the the suggestions so Amruth you're gonna get a ton of um, experience you know on this page and honestly um, you know in some cases, the toothpaste could further damage the scratched area, but in some cases it could work. So I, I don't have any magic wand to <laughs> wave and, and fix that CD, but in the comments, you will see a link to this page and I would consult that. So I'm gonna wish you the best of luck <laughs> with those CDs, okay? Thank you so much for uh, throwing that question at me again because I did want to answer it for you. Next, uh, JD, he has submitted a couple questions for this week's program. He asks, what do you recommend to preserve very old pictures in frames you can't really open or remove without destroying the original frame to scan and get a best image saved? Man, we hate old framed photos here. And it's because, you know, a lot of times, I think like in the 90s and 2000s, you know, our parents or maybe even we thought it would be a great idea to have an old document or a, an old family portrait professionally framed. And they're like, they're like, uh, uh, you need a locksmith to get into them. All right. Then you also have the really old pictures that are in like the bubble frames. And JD, we're going to talk about what you can do with the framed photos when you don't want to damage the frame or take it out. But first, I wanted to just show you a picture for those of you who you know, want to see an example here. We have quite a few different types of frames here. Um, and they're all professionally framed, all right? And some of the frames might be more modern and we, you know, you can let go of the more modern frames, but it's the antique frames that you also want to know about. I'm going to just point out the two smaller, like the 8 by 10 ish you know, framed um, with the mats there in the front. Those are professionally framed and they're more modern frames uh, that, you know, you could get in a style so that it would look more vintage. The framed large photo, the portrait in the oval mat in the back, that is an original frame with new glass in it and a, a new backing put on, but that is the original frame there. So you can see quite a variety of things. And then, you know, <laughs> the wiring was screwed on. So I, we just, we have three options with framed items here. First, you can remove the item and dispose of the frame and all of the materials that it took to put it together. We like that one in a lot of cases because people are not saving, you know, old items as much anymore. Our kids and grandkids most likely aren't going to want them. 
All right, so that's option one, which was not what JD was looking for. We have t carefully taken frame apart or frames apart and then scan the item and then replace back in the frame or you can photograph the frame photo as is. So <laughs> th these two pictures are just showing you like what you have to go through when you take a frame apart and so uh, it's really putsy. You need screwdrivers and you know like a little pliers things to pull and then you know there are a lot of parts here where you can cut yourself too. And uh, this is just another example of um, taking one of those uh, frames that are screwed together in the corners, putting something like this back together literally takes an hour. It's so putsy and things fall apart and we don't do it every day so we're not fast. If maybe you're doing this every day, you can do it in less than an hour, but that's why we don't like to put them back in. It's time consuming and um, there's things that you can cut yourself on. Like in the upper right corner, when uh, professional framers put things together with mats, they use these little metal pieces that look like shrapnel. <laughs> and I, we have a thing of band-aids here just for these purposes because we always are cutting ourselves on them. So this is another reason why we like to just dispose of the frames if, um, if our client doesn't want to keep them. Down below, finally, getting smart, we have some safety gloves on. And this frame, I have a screwdriver. We're just gently, gently lifting it up a little bit so that we can get a grip and pull the nail out. All right, so that's, you know, kind of taking things apart. For our clients who want the items put back together, we carefully, um, you know, cut out the back piece and then pop the picture out to scan it. You know, we have to unscrew that and then put it back together and then gently tape it. Um, this obviously doesn't look fantastic, but uh, this is an example of one that was uh, retaped and, um, you know, given back to the client that way. I have heard that you can take these apart and then take them over to like your craft store, Michael's maybe, and then they'll re-put the backing on for you and it doesn't cost that much, like under $10. So that's an idea as well. Now, for those of you who don't want to take the frame apart at all, there's three ways to do this. Uh, one is PhotoMine. That's an app that is on your phone. And uh, that definitely has the lowest quality, but it's pretty simple um, and it's taking a picture of a picture well all of these are right um, your camera phone you can take pictures of framed photos you know with your camera phone and I think that's probably another you know that's easier than photo mine too photo mine might actually do some color correction for you they have you know tools in there that can help improve your picture uh, and then the third option is DSLR camera, um, you know, a professional grade camera, okay? All of these, you have the challenge of lighting and reflection, and you have to overcome it. We have to figure it out here. Some days we take things outside when it's nice and cloudy, <laughs> not raining, and then we, um, we photograph it outside where the light is even. Sometimes we find a, a place inside where the lighting is good. Sometimes, you know, the glass is a little different. You literally have to experiment. So these are two items that um, were photographed. The one on the left is a huge, huge poster. And this um, poster is actually in a mat and we probably should um, crop out the mat there. But I wanted you to kind of see that it was in a frame at one point. Um, well, it is still in the frame because we didn't take it out, it's a huge poster. And that was taken with a DSL camera, DSLR camera, it looks really good. Uh, <laughs> the picture on the right, you know, now that I'm looking at it large, you know, I took that with my smartphone and you can see there, I think that there's a reflection in there of um, posters that are <laughs> behind me. <laughs> so that's what you have to watch out for is what's behind you that you can um, eliminate from the background so that there's no reflection. But 
you could see if we get rid of that reflection, that one actually might look like a decent version. So um, here on the right hand side is that same photo cropped a bit. And yeah, we need to get rid of the posters that were in the background for sure. On the left hand side, this is also a picture that was taken with my smartphone. It's the portrait that was in today's um, program cover. And, you know, anybody would probably be pretty happy with this picture. Um, and that was just taken with my smartphone. So that's a few options. I, I'm going to tell you it's the lighting and the reflection. And you want to make sure your picture, if you're photographing it, is standing upright, you know, straight up and down as possible. Sometimes we have, um, you know, our staff will hold a picture against a wall with um, one person holds it and the other person uh, photographs it. So, so there are some options for you. I hope that helps. Next up, Jacob asks, I'm doing fairly well organizing photos, but it's hard deciding which ones to keep. He's given away the duplicates and other photos to family members, but there's still a lot left over. He needs some help. It'd be appreciated. Now, I know you can go through all of these old pictures, and I think he mentioned he had photos from the 30s through the 70s, and you've given away some, but you're still left with a few hundred photos, all right? I'm showing you a screenshot here of my grandma's scrapbook photos. She had nearly 300 photos, all right? And that was for a period of between 12 years when she was traveling, and there were so many pictures. And there were, you know, the people were repeated over and over. I could not delete or eliminate any one of these. There's some time, sometimes come when you just can't figure out what to let go. And I, in my mind here, we don't obsess over it. We don't try to figure it out. We just scan them and save them. You know, any one of these pictures could have a clue that I might need someday. <laughs> Probably not, but I, I just feel good knowing they're there. So, um, Jacob, I want, you know, you know I, I want you to feel like you can let go of some of the pictures, but if, if you can't, and, it's, and actually it sounds like you did what you could already, just save them, scan them, and move on to the next part of your photo project. We can't, there's too much to do to be, you know, laboring over, should I save this or should I not? So... Just save it, scan it, and move on. I hope that's helpful, um, and we'll see. We'll see if you you let me know. All right, Angela has um, removed photos from a sticky album. What can she use to remove the adhesive residue from the photos? So I imagine many of you have those old sticky magnetic albums. And yeah, we, we hate the sticky that's left on the pictures. So what can she do? Got a few strategies, all right? So you have sticky stuff on the back and depending on what it is, sometimes it works to roll all that sticky stuff into a ball and roll it off the photo. Uh, if it's a dot or, you know, sometimes you can use another dot to help lift it away. We carefully have used X-Acto knives to help slice away um, sticky stuff, especially if it's thicker, but you have to be so careful with that. We've used a photo cleaning cloth, non-fuzzy microfiber cloth to rub away the adhesive. And my favorite solution is using a china napkin. Um, this came up from one of our course members. She had all these, she had many, many scrapbooks. I would say like 40, I oh no, She had four or five scrapbooks with 30 pictures in them, 30 pages. So four scrapbooks, 30 pages, 120 pages with four pictures on them. And they were, you put on with the uh, double-sided sticky tape and she um, uh, was peeling them off you know and, and rubbing them off one at a time and at the end 
she was just had a china napkin by her and she thought well i'll just try that and that china napkin did a really good job fastly rubbing the sticky stuff off so I don't know if any of those will work for you, um, Angela, but the sticky stuff really is annoying. And um, when it's those old magnetic albums, sometimes there's just no getting it off. So we here will use a, a sheet of paper to cover the sticky stuff up. Um, if it's, you know, we, we don't necessarily use um, archival paper because when we scan the photo, we feel like we've you know, preserve the picture digitally, but you could use archival paper to cover it up if you are concerned about um, the saving the physical picture for the long run in a photo safe manner. So I hope that helps you get the sticky stuff off your photos or um, at least give you a plan on how you can move forward in working with them. I will say Sometimes after scanning pictures, uh, we throw sticky pictures away. Um, that has you know, been an option that we've used as well. When you do scan sk sticky pictures, please be sure to clean your scanner after doing it because that sticky stuff can um, make your future pictures being scanned um, have lines or not, um, not look as good. All right, that's the sticky stuff question for today, except uh, Jeffrey posted on one of my YouTube videos, uh, he has Elvis Presley tickets and ticket stubs stuck to a page. So this is kind of the other side of the question. When you can't get something important peeled off a sticky page, um, it's really nerve-wracking, especially when you have something so important as a piece of memorabilia like this. He does not want to lose them. So uh, with paper, you can, it can go either way whether they'll come off. And um, we, when, you, when you want to protect something, I would first scan this whole page and um, crop the the tickets and the ticket stubs out of the digital image. So at least you have the digital version saved. Then go back and see if you can gently remove the, the um, pictures, or excuse me, the, the tickets from the page. And uh, strategies for removing sticky items, you know, photos and items from a sticky page include just gently putting um, something something flat uh, under um, the corner of the the ticket or the photo sometimes we've used dental floss to get under there and kind of gently work it so um, you can try a couple of those ideas and with paper you know I'm, I'm afraid to say much else because it they are um, so much more fragile so hopefully that will help Jeffrey um, with those Elvis Presley tickets, but get them scanned first of all. All right. Next question from JD. He was learning about the Epson Fast Photo 680W, our favorite consumer grade scanner for scanning pictures. And he wondered what size of photos work well with it. This um, scanner can do tiny photos all the way um, up to eight and a half by 11 sheets. So uh, it works uh, with most of those sizes. Anything larger, uh, it, it could not do. And I, in this picture, so I have a picture of the Epson Fast Photo, and then to the right, there is a carrier sheet. that carrier sheet can hold the tiny pictures or fragile newspaper articles um, that you wouldn't want to send through the scanner on its own. So that carrier sheet can handle the tiny and fragile items. Okay. So <laughs> related to um, the scanner, you, JD asks, what's the highest quality way or the best scanner to use on your oldest, most important photos? Well, there's a kind of two things going on in this question. The first one is the highest quality way. And 
there's like a lot of ways to measure quality. Uh, you know, from the cleanliness of the picture to the color to um, the size of the digital file. I'm going to just talk about dots per inch um, because that's a pretty standard thing to be, you know, looking at. Dots per inch range from 72 dots per inch all the way to 4,800 and more. Okay, so on any particular scanner, there could be quite a range of what dots per inch to scan at. Most photos should be scanned at 600 dots per inch. Uh, that's the preservation level. Uh, sometimes you'll see people scan at 300 dots per inch larger items so that the photo sizes don't become too large. But at least here at Pixology, we do most everything picture related at 600 dots per inch. Tiny photos could be scanned at 1200 dots per inch. So these are the pictures that are like the wallet size and smaller. And some people feel really strongly about photos being scanned at 1200 dots per inch. I will say that when you scan photos at 1200 dots per inch and you enlarge it, that level of detail gets enlarged as well. So any imperfection or texture on the picture becomes much more prominent when you scan at 1200 dots per inch. So you need to be aware of that, especially if you're thinking about having some restoration work done. We occasionally do those tiny photos um, at 1200 dots per inch upon request, but usually we leave those at 600 dots per inch as well because enlarging it again produces something that you know looks different. So you can experiment with this on your scanner and I encourage people to try you know and, and see how the different scans might look. As far as slides and negatives go, you know, 2,000 to 2,400 dots per inch is, you know, what we see most often. Um, 4,000 dots per inch would be, you know, a larger size file, but I've seen that too. So because slides and negatives are so much smaller, you're going to need a higher level of dots per inch, and that's why it's so much larger than the picture's dot per inch. So that's the dots per inch that we're concerned about. When you want to think about like the highest quality scanner, I mean, for our part here at Pixology, we have the Epson um, 12,000 XL. This is a uh, large format scanner and it's amazing. It does beautiful scans, but it's also between three and four thousand dollars with the the chip shortage. Um, the price of this went uh, way up over the last year and a half. So we love this scanner, and, and it does produce very good scans. Um, but we also have it right next to that consumer-grade Epson fast photo scanner, okay? You want to test your, the scans and look at it. And I don't think that most consumers will really be able to tell the difference, you know, between pictures scanned on one versus the other. What's more important is the quality of the photo, the condition of the photo, and maybe some color um, correction that can be done. So the, I'm just showing you the, the picture of the scanner, and then on the right-hand side is the scanner settings for the Epson Scan 2 um, software that you would use potentially. Um, and there are advanced settings in there, and um, there's modes and scan settings. You can get pretty involved with trying to um, save different you know, save di things at different level of quality. Usually when you, you know, go for higher quality, it's gonna increase the file size. And um, that could even mean saving pictures as TIFFs instead of JPEGs. Uh, when you scan as a TIFF, the scan collects so much more information about the photo. They are huge, huge files, okay? so. I don't know if you can tell on the bottom here, the um, newspaper that I'm scanning, at the bottom, it shows that this is going to be 225 megabytes <laughs> as a JPEG. If I save that as a TIFF, uh, it's going to be massive, okay? 
So you can play with all of those um, scanning settings, um, but the, what's going to happen is a larger file size is going to be resulting. For people who are concerned about like the quality of color, well, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic. And for our part here at Pixology, and for what I teach, I. I think people focus too much maybe on one individual picture, and some you need to because they're important family photos, but um, I'm more worried about your overall collection, the organization, and that you have your family memories and legacy preserved in a way that's easy to access today, share today, and then save for future generations. So we don't focus as much on the color quality because that really is a rabbit hole. Any of you who have started to like edit your pictures know that like hours can fly by and uh, you might not have accomplished as much as you want. So anyway, quality is a, a, um, a loaded question, all right? And I hope that um, gives you some things to think about, JD, uh, in terms of the highest quality scanner if you want to pay a lot, um, but you also you don't want to get it done, and that's why that Epson fast photo scanner um, it works really well. Okay, <laughs> that is that is it on that question for today. I have another question from um, uh, that's kind of related to size. This is from Robert. He is wondering, with iPhone pics, pictures, I think, getting so big, is there a size you'd recommend? Um, my old historian pics, and historian is a, a software that um, is, you can use to manage your photos, which he used, uses. Um, his old historian pics were about two megabytes for good ones, and then 200 to 500K for snaps he wouldn't print. And he mentions he has a shortcut set up to drop the size. In our workflow, we don't ever resize pictures unless we have a, a, a problem. One time we scanned oh, thousands of photos at 1,200 dots per inch on accident, and then we had to fix that. But normally we don't worry about the size anytime that you adjust a picture size you are resaving it and reducing its overall digital quality okay so um, maybe in the past people would resize their picture so that they would fit easier on their computer or whatever but um, i don't think that's a good idea today even if you wouldn't necessarily print the picture you just i wouldn't mess with it I did put this slide up here for you because uh, I do think it is important to think about sizes, okay? Um, anything that's under 100 kilobytes is tiny and unusable, okay? Though pictures that are 100 to 500 kilobytes are small and you may be able to make a 4 by 6 print. All right. Sometimes you're going to have pixelation in there, especially if it's under 250 kilobytes. The photos that are 500K to 1 megabyte are medium. And I, and these are my designations from what I've seen over the years. I like to have photos be saved between 1 megabyte and 4 megabytes. They're large, you know, they're good for most any project and for preservation. Okay, that's my goal is to have them between one megabyte and four megabytes. And it's not that I go and reduce pictures to get into there. I want to produce pictures that are in that size. So in our scanning workflow, on my phone, uh, that those kind of settings I want to make sure are good to go so I don't have to mess with the size. And then um, the pictures that are four megabyte and up, like you can have photos that are legit, like I just showed you, 225 megabytes. These, this size is really for advanced editing and graphic design. Um, I do know one of our scanners here does scan pictures in the six to eight megabyte range. And, and we like the other parts of how the pictures are produced there. So sometimes you're, photos might be a little larger than that and and that's okay um, this is kind of a guideline and in case <laughs> those of you who don't think about bytes and megabytes and all of that too often I have a little chart on the right so a thousand bytes equals one kilobyte 
and a thousand kilobytes equals one megabyte and a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte and a thousand gigabytes is one terabyte so if you ever come across a photo that says like 300 bytes you're in trouble that is a teeny weeny <laughs> photo all right so i hope this answers uh that question on you know what size should you be saving your pictures at it's really more about you know what size are you taking pictures at or which size are you scanning photos at what well, you know what are you aiming for all right that is um a good question robert and thanks for sending that to me back to jd he wonders what can you do with important sentimental items that aren't photos or paper like glassware jewelry stuffed animals etc is there a way to add info or a story regarding that photo or maybe you maybe you take a video um, of of those items that you upload to forever so he's looking at forever which is our go-to solution for saving family memories to enjoy today and pass on to future generations so he wants to know about the things that aren't paper photos and videos um, yes we have lots of examples of taking pictures of items <laughs> you know for um for posterity okay and we have an example here on the left of a a, a really unique um uh, whole uh container i don't even know what you call that a little box a special box that at one time had a key and these are special postcards that are in there we could certainly scan the postcards but having a photo of this box and maybe the cover of it would be very special because it was inherited from a great grandfather and that could uh, we want to save that story sometimes people have collections here is um, wine corks or records and um, this particular client just wanted to have a photo of some of it so he could kind of remember <laughs> back in the day uh, when they had records and um, have a photo of his collection. When you take picture, you know, of items, and it could be jewelry, it could be furniture. We have people who take um, pictures of their wardrobe so they have an inventory. When you take pictures, you can add the information in forever. So I'm gonna just show you a picture that was uploaded from one of our dear clients, Jen. And Jen lets me let me share her account. Um, she passed away this year and she was a fantastic um, woman. Uh, we took a picture of um, some items from her office, okay? Especially the um, balance there and then her desk plate. And uh, on the right hand side in forever, this is a screenshot, I've clicked edit info and I'm adding a description here, items from Jen's offices. And, and I'm just putting a note that she was the first female attorney in Chicago back in the late 1960s and got her law degree going to night school. It's a fantastic story. I could also um, change the date taken, but what i don't need to do that i took that back in 2018 but forever allows you to save a description i could add tags if i wanted and uh and save that story so i just uh, wanted to show you a quick example of um, how you can add a description in forever and these are so um so valuable when you know future generations come to you know look at this picture they're going to read this and they'll have that information right there uh, to look at copy and maybe make into something that they want to have printed you know for their family so jd that was a great question and i hope that i answered it i think the other thing you can do when you have a an object that is an heirloom is you can do a video and you could talk about it videos go up into forever as well and then you're getting more than just a snapshot you're getting the story and you're hearing someone share why that item is important and that's so special to give to future generations for those of you who want to know a little bit more about forever i have a link down in the comments where you can have um, a, a trial account and you can get a 20 dollars coupon so if you want to know more about that um, just uh, go ahead and click that link and we're always here to answer questions for you 
So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Corinne. Thank you so much for being with me here in this recorded journey. And Corinne will capture any other questions that might be out there. Hello, thank you for your patience. Um, again, I'm Corinne and I'm a photo organizer here. Um, so yeah, if you have any um, questions, um, I could try to answer them. Otherwise, Molly will address them in uh, the future um, Facebook, YouTube um, live session. This will also be available if anyone needs to go back to it. It'll um, be available as a recording. But thank you for joining us today. I'll give you a couple minutes for any questions. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining and we'll see you next week. Remember, um, yeah, you can send some, um, oh, liquids to clean. Okay. That I will have to take a note of, um, Jeanette. Um, or what exactly um, are you, are you looking to clean? Okay, so sort of like um, if it's a sticky photo. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, we could address that. I'd say um, if you even if you have if for the back of the photo, it's not. Um, as look at um, if you just have like a, a probably a very, very damp cloth and just sort of lightly, you know, that might work on it. But um, I could have have Molly address that if there's anything um, anything um, that she recommends that would be better. So yeah, I'll I'll have her address that, um, Jeanette. And then JD. Um, is it true that JPEG files degraded with you with use versus TIFF files? Um, I will have to have have Molly address that. Um, so she she will address that in the next Facebook Live. And so um, I will I'll make sure that um, she, she yeah she'll address that question in the ne next Facebook Live. But I will take note of that. Are there any other questions um, that either, yeah, um, I can have Molly address, you know, next week or um, in my knowledge <laughs> as a photo organizer, <laughs> I can try to help. Well, if that's all, thank you so much for joining and for your patience as we sort of worked out all the, the tech issues. Um, and I appreciate you guys joining us and please join us next week because um, we already always have um, new things to, to cover and um, a lot of good information. So have a great week. Bye.